first off, just a little housekeeping. Um, Want to give a big thank you up front and at the end to student leadership for making this happen. Uh, they invited me to encourage me to have a workshop and help me come up with the theme. Uh, let's demystify the uh, scholarships here. Uh, they are asking for anybody who has LB Live to use this QR code to register um, and sign up for this class, class workshop, I should say. Um, and if you do not help LB Live, you can click on the link in the chat feature below. So um, there's some uh, good stuff that will maybe come your way from signing up for this. I'm not going to promise too much, but it's the word on the street. All right. I know everybody has uh, no time these days. So I'm going to go ahead and just dive into this uh, presentation. Uh, first off, I want to introduce myself. My name is Linnea Everts. I'm with the LBCC Foundation. And the LBCC Foundation is a separate organization from the college. We exist uh, as a nonprofit. So if donors in the community want to donate funds to help students, they donate to the foundation. They do not donate to the college. Uh, we kind of are um, kind of a separate little house. And I have the fortunate job of supporting students with scholarships, emergency funds. I also help programs with funding that is that they have for that they have raised uh, fundraising so that's my job I give out money and I raise money all right let's start up so one of the things I've been doing this job for about four years and I think one of the things that we have come to working with Rob Cam and everybody knows um, we've, we've determined that there's just a lot of myths about scholarships. There's a lot of people that don't apply for scholarships because they simply feel that they don't, they're not the right fit. So we, this session is actually going to talk about taking, getting rid of some of those myths. We're also going to go through the application real quick as well. So two things. So one of the things I just want to touch on first here is one of the most common things I hear is about scholarships is I don't qualify for financial aid. My grades are not good. I've applied for scholarships before and never get them. Why would I get them now? I don't have any special skills. I don't have enough financial needs. Somebody else needs it more than I need it. Um, and it's just taking way too much time to apply and figure out where to go. So I'm hoping, hoping that in this session that we will eliminate those myths. And if you have questions along the way, please put them in the chat. Um, I will open it up after the presentation for questions, but if you want to just put those in the chat feature, um, Miranda Mullins will help me, let me know when those come in, and then um, we can kind of do an open question at the end. So, all right. So, let's bust those myths. So, for financial aid, first off, scholarships are not financial aid. We are separate. So the money raised in the LBCC foundation is money that it comes from private citizens, organizations, staff, even prior uh, former students, alumni. They give to LBCC to help students at LB. So basically these are only scholarships that are open for only for LB students. We are not financial aid. We are not a federal institution. So we don't actually have a requirement that you have to apply for a FAFSA to get scholarships. There might be one or two older scholarships that does have a preference that you file a FAFSA. The reason for that is to show that you have financial need, but that's not really a necessity anymore because we have an online scholarship system that has a budget spreadsheet and that budget spreadsheet will ask all the information we need that would be available in the financial aid. So, I know a lot of you uh, may have the problem of your financial aid is based on your parents' income, and then your parents actually don't help you with any of your funding for school. That would be more important than ever for you to apply for scholarships. Um, if you are one of the students, there's several of you I know who've come back and started over trying a new degree. Uh, if you've already had FAFSA in the past, financial aid in the past, and obtained a degree, but you want to get a new degree or a new certification, you are not eligible. Again, scholarships would be the answer for you. And then there's also the, uh, the concern that always comes from the parents, ironically, is that if you get a scholarship, um, it's going to impact your financial aid package. 
we look at every single student who gets a scholarship and make sure that it's not going to negatively impact your financial aid package. Occasionally, very, very rare would it impact work study. We would not give us we would not give a scholarship until checking with with you as a student whether you would want to keep the work study or not. So I've never really had a situation where I've had to not award a scholarship because of someone's financial aid. If anything, what happens is that the subsidized, the unsubsidized loans that you would be taking and getting into debt would be canceled. So instead you're getting free money because that's what scholarships are. You do not need to pay back scholarship funds. Scholarships funds are raised to help you in, in your education and you, they're yours to keep. You do not need to pay it back. So that would be more the reason. Everybody's very fearful of getting into scholarship debt or um, financial aid debt, and this would be the reason. So I want to kind of squash some of the, we kind of talked about this before, but some of the um, kind of common misconceptions. Um, I want to just identify that People donate to the LBCC Foundation because they recognize that uh, community college students have so much going on. Some of you are raising families. Some of you are working at the same time. Some of you are doing this at night. Others are just, you know, starting over. You have a lot on your plate. You are not going to most likely be a 4.0 4 student. If you are, that's fine. No, no, no problem with that. But it's really important to understand that scholarships exist. And a lot of them have a minimum require of a 2.5 GPA some even down to 2.0. We have maybe one or two scholarships that are merit-based. When I say merit-based, that would be um, a basically require a higher, a higher GPA. I think 3.0 3 is the highest we have. All right, so as I mentioned, the reality is that we have over 150 scholarships in the foundation. They have been donated uh, by, by people that have previously worked here. We have organizations that support us. We have a lot of organizations in the area that see the value of LBCC and supporting students because they selfishly want to employ you in the future. So that's a great thing in your, for you because there's money that I can hand out to you. Now, so the other thing is these scholarships are only available to LBCC students. You may sometimes get emails that say, hey, apply for this one federal scholarship. One person's gonna get $500 and it's a nationwide scholarship. The likelihood of you getting that is very small. And on top of it, it's also kind of fishy whether, you know, what's the intent of this if only one person gets 500. We, these, these scholarships are only open to LBCC students. You need to be enrolled in a credit seeking program. For those of you who have siblings, friends, relatives that are thinking about going to school next year, once you're admitted into, to LBCC, you can apply for scholarships. So in the springtime, once you get admitted, you can then be eligible to apply for scholarships. Good stuff. And then the other part that I think is really important to mention is that this application, and I'm going to kind of switch over to the application and walk through that real quick, is that there's just one general application that you complete. Once you submit that, it's going to automatically match you to anything you qualify. So you do not need to go out there and read through every single one of them and get overwhelmed. So that's one of the things that Rob and I have been talking about is the fact that even if I write that in the top of the uh, scholarship application, the reality is that um, you guys end up on that front page and it's daunting and you may just close it out and say, oh, I'll do it later or you never get around to it. We're hoping that this today, this session will make you think else and apply. So let me see here. All right. So we got two scholarship cycles. The current cycle opened on Welcome Day. It's going to be open until Friday, October 22nd. And then we have a larger scholarship cycle that opens up in the early spring. It's going to open up on February 21st. And that is going to be open for some scholarships will only be open for two weeks. So I would definitely recommend all current students apply early in the spring because that means that you can be eligible for scholarships to help you as soon as spring term next year. Um, the others are for the following year. And even if there's some of you that may be finishing up your program um, only after one term, I still highly recommend you apply for scholarships each cycle. And we'll talk more about why that, should, what you should do that. All right. And then, as I mentioned, once you submit your application, the automatically, it's going to automatically match you to anything you qualify. And as to how that works, that is something I'm going to talk to you now. I'm going to switch over here. Let me see here. Okay. So 
I cannot see a lot of you, but I would love to hear, see from maybe some raising some hands, how many people have applied for scholarships in the past? All right. I have already prom I've already given Jim a heads up, but I want to pick on Jim Harris. Jim, if you would not mind just spending like two or three sentences and just talking about the, how, how you felt the application process was. In the beginning, I thought, oh, goodness. And then I just uh, said, I'm just going to write, write out the paragraph and just keep writing and then um, reread it and proofread it and then submitted it. And then um, it automatically clicked over and said, you've been accepted. And then here's a list of the ones that um, we think you fit for. So check these out and then you just go to that one and fill those out. Simple. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'm sorry to pick on you here, but it's, it's always nice to have somebody hear from a fellow student. So as you can see right here, very lengthy. There's a lot of words here. The reason there's a lot of words here is because there's a lot of information, but I don't want this to scare you. So what the great part about this is if you had been here four years ago, you would have still had to use five years ago, you would have had to find a paper application for the scholarship. You would have to know where to go. You would have to do it on paper, submit it to the right person, get references, sign dot all the lines, and submit numerous applications to numerous scholarships. We, were, we invested in a scholarship um, online system, which we now have been using for four years, and I've made some modifications over the summer. But the system really is simple. So this is where you might get overwhelmed. You go to this page and you say, okay, here we go. We got Anthony, we got Bymar, and we can just, you know, we can see Watson and, and all these different scholarships. I don't even know where to start. The good news is this is just for informational purposes, and there's really no need for you to dive into this. By all means, if you want to read about it and, you know, educate yourself, go for it. But otherwise, what you want to do at the first time you're signing up you're signing up the sign up quick, button. Linnea, yes looks like you have a question or a hand raised from laura oh, okay go ahead laura sorry i have that clicked from when you were asking if we've ever um i'll lower it if we ever applied for a scholarship i forgot to unclick it oh no worries did you uh did you have a good experience um, it seemed a little bit like there's a lot of maybe scams and it was hard to sift through and see what was legitimate and what wasn't. So not really. So it you're, not, like so you're saying asking I'm for a lot of personal information off the bat and you didn't really know who you're giving that to. And are you, um, are you, are you talking about applying for our scholarships at LB or other scholarships? Oh, no, no, no. Just like okay. if you go to a scholarship website and then they have like different companies or different groups that you can apply individually. It just was a weird, it was a weird experience that way. Yeah. And I, and I'm so glad you said something, Laura. Thank you. I thank you for, um, I'm glad I asked you because I really want to warn all of you, uh, to think, to think about that. There are sadly a lot of people that are trying to, they desperately know, or they know that everyone is desperately in, in, in as students looking for funding. So what happens is if there's a scholarship that seems too good to be true, like a federal scholarship, and there's one scholarship, and it asks you to, even if it's a really nice, pretty form, asks you for a lot of personal information, you should not fill that out. Um, I, uh, we actually even have been very reluctant to uh, provide links on our website, we will in the future, to external scholarships, just because we need to verify that they are not a fishing expedition. That is literally what they are. And what happens is people provide their personal information and then they get caught up in this line of getting a bunch of useless emails and bombarded. So definitely don't do that. That's where you can rest assured the LBCC Foundation, our scholarships are, the money is handled by us. We manage the funds, we have professionals. We should actually even have a full board that oversees this process. So these are legitimate scholarships that have been created for LBCC students only. And these are the ones that we're gonna be talking about today, but good, good word on, let's be wary of those outside that doesn't seem really good. Um, so I, I do, I will say that there's a few organizations that have some very good scholarships and I can kind of mention some of those at the end, but for now, well, thanks for that. So, okay. So while we're at this website here, you're going to go sign up. If you've never signed up before, you go click on the sign up button. And I will warn you, the system is a little slow. Um, so 
what you're going to do is you're going to put in your email address. You're going to create a password. Now, de definitely put down what your password is. Um, this is a common thing. If you try to log in and you have the wrong password uh, after four or five tries, it's going to lock up and it, it says it's going to be available again in 10 minutes. It's not. So the system really write down this password, make sure it's something you remember. If you have trouble signing in afterwards, there is that trouble signing in button, but I highly recommend you just, you know, take this slow. So when you create, when you're setting up this account, you're going to need to put in your student email. That's the one that the, our system recognizes because that's basically another criteria is that you're a credit seeking student. So only credit seeking students have eligibility ability to apply for our LBCC scholarships. So if you're not, then you're not going to have access. So what will happen is once you create this, it's going to go, there's going to be a link sent to your, to your student email. You're going to go click on that email and then log back in and you're off to the races. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and sign in. Once you've signed in before, you will um, see, um, you will be going to the applicant administrator tab right here. So, all right, I can't tell you how much easier this is than having to um, do this on paper. So good news is, here we go. I can see here, this is how many have submitted applications, how many have drafted them. So that means you have to finish it, <laughs> you remember that. Um, and this is how much money we've got to give out this term. Um, and this is going to be money that's going to be distributed winter and or spring term for next year. So that is a big help. I'm going to click on the button here and go to the applicant page to show you what it looks like as an applicant. This is the application. Again, there is one general application. Once you submit this application, that's that's it. Really, there's a few things we'll talk about. Very straightforward. Anything with a little star, that is a required field. So this is very basic information. Uh, for those of you who may be living here as you consider in a temporary basis, you may be uh, living elsewhere, but Lynn and Benton County is where you're temporary living while you're studying. I would put your current address. The reason for that is we do give a preference. There's a number of scholarships that do give a preference for students who live in the Lynn and Benton County area, even some Polk and Marin. Um, Marion, sorry. And um, so it'd be important just to put your, your local address so you have that eligibility. So a lot of students, as you can see, this is not a required field here for current students with your GPA at this point. The reason it's not required is you may not know at this point if you've just started what your GPA is. Now, rest assured, the system will tell me exactly what your GPA is. So even if you put 4.0 in this field, I'm going to actually know and the system will know too your actual GPA. Um, the one that's really important is what is your major area of study? We have scholarships that are specific for certain areas. For those of you who are in nursing, there's a number of scholarships that are only for nursing students. Culinary has the same, welding, I go, the list goes on and on, but there's also a lot of general scholarships. So that's why I want us to not forget, again, not, you don't need that, you don't need to be that special perfect unicorn, you just need to be you and you're gonna be eligible for scholarships. And the one thing I do wanna point out though, is this question here. How many credits will you be enrolled during the term for which you are applying for a scholarship? You're gonna to wanna to put at least 12. Even if you're unsure at this point, how many credits you will be enrolled winter term, by putting 12 in there, that means that's considered full time from our perspective. So that's another thing to remember. We'll talk about this at the end about eligibility, but just go ahead and put 12 in there. Moving along, very straightforward. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, high school. Some of you may think I went to high school 20 years ago. Why does it matter I went to high school? We actually have donors that have given preferences, not a requirement because they can't do that. They have given a preference for, say, students from um, Crescent Valley. There is a scholarship that will give a preference. So not a must. But if you went to Crescent Valley, you have a preference above other candidates. Donors have the right to establish any criteria they want as long within legal limits. And uh, they, if they wanna support somebody in that fashion, they have the right to do so. So that's why you've got these questions here. Um, moving right along, um, here's the bulk of the application. So we've got three parts. I made some changes over the summer. The first part, um, and Jim mentioned this earlier, is write a statement discussing your educational and career goals and talk about what inspired you and what you're planning to do in the future. So people will call me after a scholarship cycle and say, hey, I, I applied. Can you give me some you know, constructive criticism and feedback as to how I can get a better scholarship application that may give me a higher chance to get an award? 
the all the answer is almost always when I go in and look at an application, they have spent two, maybe two, three sentences in this part. You do not need to write a uh, essay. You do not need to have an award-winning uh, writing skills, but you do need to share your story. And keep in mind that student, the people that are reviewing these scholarships are internal staff and people are looking for to support the LB student, like who you are. So say for example, you had an example I hear, I see a lot. There's a nursing student. They had an experience with their grandmother when they were a child. And at that point there was a nurse that took care of um, grandma. Well, this student, you know, sees how grandma is benefiting from this nurse, gets inspired, takes biology in high school, then realizes at the end of class, I really want to be a nurse. I want to go into healthcare. This is where I want to go. That's the story we want to hear. We want to hear that story of what has inspired you to get to LB. For some of you, you may say, I'm not inspired. I'm told to go to LB because my mom and dad told me to go to LB. Okay, you know what? You still have a story. Talk about what is it? What are your interests? What are your dreams? Even if you're confused, you could even put that. I don't know what I want to do, but this is, you know, I'm giving this a start and this is where I may end up. I have seen essays that have been amazing essays. They have gotten a scholarship. And the next year I read the same, the same student's uh, application, completely different, different story because the story changes. And that's something that you'll see when you apply for scholarships each time, you will be asked to rewrite this part. So what I recommend you doing is when you write this, go ahead and save it in a Google doc somewhere and then just have, just go ahead and update it. And then you've got it there handy. So you don't have to rewrite it, but you, you will find that some of your goals and some of your dreams and some of your things that inspire you will change during the course of your education. So I'm still trying to figure out what my dreams are. I mean, I was gonna be a baker, but we're over that. Okay, so the other thing that we wanted to do over the summer was to get rid of, um, sorry, I've just got a question here. Yes, the questions are the same. So this is gonna be the same application each time. So you're gonna to wanna to go, that's why I highly recommended um, you going ahead and once you, once you have written this and made it what you want it to be, that you can save it somewhere and just cut and paste it in and then just update it if needed. So anyway, over the summer, we took a look at, before there used to be areas where it was like list community activity, list employment history, list honors and recognition, and it always stumped people. But then when I asked people to talk about it or just express like, well, what have you been doing the last 10 years? Oh, well, I stayed home and I raised three kids and uh, we moved across country and I've been helping my, you know, great, you know, take care of my grandmother that explains what you've been doing for the last 10 years. That's what we want to hear. And it's really hard for so many of us. Like I was a stay-at-home mom for, for several years. How do you explain that gap in activity? How do you explain that, you know, I can't work because I don't have time to work because I have to take care of my family. Those sort of things. That's is where instead of doing kind of the individual list your community activities and volunteer projects, that sort of thing, there's an opportunity to share that. And if you don't have that experience, you can share why you have it. So hopefully that will help many of you because I think that was something that was a hard part before. The final part, so we got three, three questions here. And I really don't, I really don't want to scare, I know there's some of you, including myself, that may get a little overwhelmed when it comes to um, writing essays and, and sharing a lot about your personal life. I hate doing that. I, I don't mind talking to people, but when it comes to my personal, I get very, very, you know, it, it's, it's hard. So I want you to know that you, you just write what you can. There is, you do not need to use all the words that are required. Some people actually asked me to extend the words because they felt 500 weren't enough. So I've made it 650 now. So does not mean you need to write 650. So words. Uh, the last statement would be the financial need. This is where we were talking about the um, FAFSA, where you may have gotten financial aid. And um, you are, are not getting really what you need because you, it's based on your parents' situation. Actually, it could be your parents' situations two years ago because the snapshot is somewhat delayed. And now your parents don't have the income and you're not getting any help from them. And because of this, all of this is going on. You don't have enough to basically be in school. This is a very important part that you would share with us. Another thing people can share in here is that, yes, I have a really strong financial aid award and I get a scholarship. I also have some horrible medical bills from a family or from an accident in the family. This is something we understand. We see that and we say, this is a severe financial need. Medical bills is probably one of the common um, curses for all of us. I personally, you know, you just have this medical bill that looming and we just want to get a 
big, good financial snapshot. So that's what this section is for. And then we're moving down. A few more questions. We have a lot of scholarships that do give a preference to students who have children um, and also uh, single parents. Uh, donors have given to support those students because they know they have um, a lot of a lot more stress than maybe a, a family. Um, some basic questions. We have the final link is going to be the budget form. Again, that is in lieu of financial aid. We are able to, if you use this, we don't have to go ahead and look at requiring a FAFSA. A lot of scholarships will say FAFSA required because it's the easy way for them to administer because they can look at that. What that eliminates is people that do not qualify for FAFSA. So we do not require FAFSA for our scholarships, but we do require that you share a, a, uh, a snapshot of your budget. And this is a new newly created form. Some of you that applied before may have experienced the Excel spreadsheet that was really cumbersome to use because who has Excel at home? Um, this is a, just a snapshot. They're looking at a six months. So if you, there's zero on this, go ahead zero. I mean, just basically it's very straightforward. How much are your tuition and fees, book supplies, that sort of thing. You are not going to be, this is not some sort of test. You do not need to, um, uh, you know, finagle this just to think that you have more need. I have still to, um, sorry, I'm, I'm like losing myself, I'm losing my, my field. I have still to see a student that um, does not have financial needs. So, all right. So let me, let me get out of this. Sorry. Um, anybody have any questions while I maneuver this, this very, uncomfortable. Um, anybody have any questions or comments or anything? I have a question. Yeah, Jim, go ahead. Um, I looked on the references there and I did read something and, and they like weren't there anymore. It said they had expired. So am I required to resubmit the ones that I had submitted previously? Or no, no. Work? No, um, actually, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. It's gonna be my last. I'm gonna be my last thing about this application is we are no longer requiring references. Um, references were becoming quite cumbersome. Students were requesting them. Uh, references were not getting back to them, and we just really felt that it wasn't fair because students would have a really, really strong application, a high financial need, but they didn't get the references getting back to them. And we were, you know, it was unfortunate. So we said, we actually did some due diligence and found out that a lot of institutions have eliminated using references for scholarships uh, just because it really becomes, uh, uh, it just becomes an issue for students to get them. So, all right, good question. All right. I will um, going to stop here. This is where the final process is. You can you can save and keep editing. Uh, hey, and Lydia, what, there was another question. Yes. Um, is that did you say FAFSA or budget? I think it was referring to the form. Okay. So let me let me see here if I can see in the chat here. But uh, let me see chats. Lene, I just want to clarify. I, I wrote that. Uh, okay. Carry card. Um, uh, did you say that you could submit the FAFSA or your budget? No, or? no, we're, we're just, we just want you to, to, to do the budget just because okay. FAFSA is become, it's just an sure. equity issue, um, sure. Sure. to be honest. Sure. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's great. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, of course. And we um, actually and have some. There was, yeah. there was also a question about where this will be posted after it's recorded. That would be a Rob question. We'll get it. We'll get it up, and we'll put it on the probably the student um, life webpage. We'll get it linked there. Awesome. All right, guys. I'm not going to take too much time. I'm going to step. I'm going to walk through a few last things, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the final process. You can save and keep editing. I highly recommend that you do that. Um, I personally benefit when I write something, put it aside, and then go back to it just to spell check. Um, and we'll talk about some of the other kind of good things to, to know. Uh, so there's that button down here, save and keep editing. And then once you're finished, 
you finish and submit. Once you finish and submit, the system will basically, as, as Jim mentioned, and as I mentioned, the system's gonna automatically match you to any scholarships that you qualify for. So super simple. Again, you don't need to go seek them out. Now, what's gonna happen, there will be a list that will say of the scholarships that you're matched to. If you don't need to do anything further on that scholarship, it's going to say none. Um, if there are other opportunities that require additional information, from, from this general application, they're gonna be listed as with a blue button that says apply to. And those apply to opportunities will require additional information. You will click on those. If, if it's relevant, you will know right off the bat. If you're in welding and it asks you if you're in nursing 101, you be, no, the answer is no, you're not gonna apply for that scholarship. So, but there are other scholarships. We do have a few scholarships that are, for example, we have one that's open for veterans. Even people that have a veteran in their family, a grandpa, parent, a father, a mother, a spouse, you would then be required, for example, in that particular scholarship, I believe you are required to upload a honorable discharge form. So it's basically these apply to scholarships, it's worth clicking on them to see if this is something that you need, that you want to consider. Again, you've already been put in the applicant pool for other scholarships that are automatically matched to you, but these apply to's are ones that may be additional opportunities. They're just gonna require some additional information. Some of them may ask for you to write a short essay. Um, there are some that give a preference to somebody who's going through a uh, recovery and that sort of thing. So there's just, you know, be aware of that and spend some time looking through those once you're finished. So that is what I've got for the application. I'm going to go ahead and click over to my presentation if I can find it. Um, let me see here. I wanted to say something, Linnea. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Um, about the uh, save and keep editing. That is like super important. I found out the hard way because I had written probably close to 500 words in my beginning paragraph, my opening statement, or however you want a life story. And it was, it was great. I walked away and I was gone for like 15 or 20 minutes, maybe a little bit more. And I came back and it was blank. And so that save and keep editing is critical. If, if you're not writing it in a Google doc, which my wife was like, why didn't you write it and then put it in there? So anyways, I rewrote it again and then I saved it. And then I came back to it, oh, two hours later and it opened it back up and it was all right there. So that button is super important. Awesome. It's it's like it's like I paid Jim to be here today. Like I just want, he's just covering those important things. I, that's very good information. I think we've all been there. I actually had my computer die on me in college once and it was, I'm still traumatized, you know, 25 years later. All right. So there is a QR code on the screen right now with a cute little elephant dinosaur in the middle that will take you to the scholarship application. Otherwise, if you're trying to find the scholarship application, you can go to our website at lidbenton.edu and just put scholarships and it will take you to, to the link. It's not so, the I'm sorry, what? It's not on the screen right now. You said there was a QR code on the screen, but it's not up there. Well, that's weird. Let me, uh, glad you mentioned that. Okay. Let me, there we go. Share. All right. So this isn't so difficult, right? I mean, I think this is, I'm hopefully, are you guys seeing that now? Yeah. Yep, it's there. Awesome. Okay. Just waiting for this to go full screen here real quick. All right. So um, again, if you need to find this a scholarship, you can go to our webpage and, and uh, put in scholarships. So moving right along here, Tom. My so computer. the QR code is the same as the little chat in the, the little link that's in the web chat that's here? No, this, no, this is another link. Uh, oh, so Oh, oh, maybe, yes, maybe Miranda did put it in there. Good for you, Miranda. She's so good. Um, uh, no, somebody else did put the link in there and they asked if it was correct. And I just clicked on it and it took me to the LBCC website. So Okay, great. Okay, so if you haven't already gotten the, the, gotten the, uh, the big message here today is that really this application, if you want to break it down, is to be yourself. We want to hear your story. There's nobody else. We, this is not a, 
um, I was I did a presentation this morning for the culinary arts students, and um, I, I told them this is you know we are community we're a community college we have people from all walks of life different ages different backgrounds, and that's what makes it a fantastic great place. And just always keep in mind that there are there are donors out there that know exactly what you're going through and the diverse background that you have, and they're here to support you. So. Um, there's basically just be you. All right, we already talked about this, um, but I just wanna emphasize again when we kind of did this, you know, just focus on you, what's brought you here. Um, if you're the first person in your family to attend higher education, that is something we see a lot. And we wanna hear how, what perhaps was that um, inspired you to uh, break the mold. Okay, so we talked about the budget spreadsheets. That is, we don't want that to scare you. There's not a right or wrong. We just really need to see that financial um, um, snapshot because we're not requiring that FAFSA requirement. So don't rush. Um, as Jim said also, maybe put it in a Google Doc and save it and then reread it and take a look at it. Sometimes people like getting input from their family, others don't. So um, just do what works. Um, so the timeline, so scholarships are now currently being open. You do need to submit your application by midnight on Friday, October 22nd. So that gives you about just over two weeks left to apply for scholarships. The scholarship application or the review process is very cumbersome. We actually have internal staff that donate their time because each application is reviewed by at least two people. So if your application ends up in four, four different buckets, um, and you're in the pool for the for four different scholarships, your application is reviewed uh, by two people in each of those. So each application is looked at differently depending on the criteria of the scholarship. That's the reason we do that. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very cumbersome process, but um, it's also very award, awarding, uh, rewarding for a lot of our staff. They feel that they really get a, a picture as to uh, what you guys are going through and doing with your life. So it's great. Um, award notifications will take place the first week in December. Um, the, scholarships in the, the, the scholarships running in this cycle would be awarded some in only for winter and some are both for winter and spring. Um, the one thing I want to highlight, I've mentioned this to anybody who's already received a scholarship. At this point, it is not possible to see LBCC scholarships in your web runner financial page. They are working on making that change, but it's not ready yet. So just if you are awarded a scholarship, you will get an email and that will have the details of the scholarship. And I believe that is my final, final point I want to make, which is that uh, a scholarship does have eligibility requirements. In other words, if the scholarship requires you to have a 2.5 and be enrolled in uh, 12 credits in welding, if any of those things would change, if you're uh, under 2.5. Yeah, there was a yeah. question. It says, is there a limit on how many we can do? No, you could. I mean, it's unusual if you, you qualify automatically for all scholarships, but I think we have 26 scholarships open right now. And some people uh, will qualify for over 10 or 12 scholarship. It really depends on, again, your GPA, your, um, you know, what major you have and a, and a few other criteria. So are there usually a lot of applications? Yes. Um, we typically get approximately 500, 550 applications in a normal scholarship cycle. I would love to see that double. Uh, my dream is to have everybody apply for a scholarship. Uh, obviously, there's going to be, you know, people say, well, then there's less, you know, some more competition. But what that also does, it shows uh, our donors that there's a there's a higher need. I spend a lot of time talking to community partners and people in, in our area, as well as staff, and talk about just the needs that students have. At this point, only one in four students are getting scholarships, so there is more financial need um, than we can help. But we can help some, which is which is what we our goal is. And my whole my whole job is to raise funds and uh, make sure to help you students. So I take it very personally and very inspired because of you um, to go out and just um, share how much um, giving a scholarship really helps. So. Let's get back here. Let me see here. So the scholarship criteria is set by the donor. Uh, some of these donors set the scholarship criteria in 1984. They are long 
passed, uh, but their legacy continues. Uh, they did made a great investment. So each year it kind of spins off a scholarship. They set that criteria and unless it's illegal, we cannot change that. So if you have a scholarship and you feel that you should be eligible for it, it could be that uh, you are not because it's just, we can't, we can't change the criteria. I just want to put that in a nice way. Um, if you get a scholarship and you are not eligible anymore, uh, an important fact that I have not pointed out yet that if you're a DPP student, you are still eligible to apply for LBCC scholarships, even if you're homeschool and your financial aid is at OSU, as long as you're enrolled in at least six credits at LBCC. Once you dip under those six credits at LBCC, you are no longer eligible for scholarships. So that's something that will happen um, to some of our students. They anticipated being here for full two years and then they moved along quicker than they thought they got a scholarship that's paid out winter fall and spring and before you know it they're off in winter and then I go ahead and unfortunately I cannot award that scholarship if you're not here uh, over six credits but if you're over six credit you should apply for scholarships because you could be getting scholarships from both institutions so um, if you're another question um, it says if students are already receiving scholarships, should they still apply now? Yes. So there is basically, um, I love these questions. It's such perfect, it's like I planned them. But I, I, these, it's really important to remember, even if you have the Oregon Promise, even if you have financial aid, even if you have other outside scholarships, you should still apply for scholarships. What will happen is if you get scholarship and you already have your tuition covered, that money will be refunded to you to use for living expenses. Now that's not a, that's not a given with scholarships. That is something that's very unique to um, our LBCC Foundation. I'm, I'm very proud of that. Um, there, we have approximately two or three scholarships, business only, that do that do only fill for tuition and books up to to a certain number of credits. Otherwise, if you already have yourself everything covered, the Oregon Promise, you have financial aid. If you get a scholarship, that gets refunded back to you because LBCC's one of our main objectives is we are looking at affordability at all times. We recognize that there's a lot more expenses to your life in school than just books. Um, fees and um, tuition. So if you get a refund, you are, you, you are allowed to use that money as you see fit to use for living expenses, rent, food, whatever you need. So I will reassign scholarships. So if somebody leaves, you get reassigned. So you may not get a scholarship the first time, but then maybe, you know, two weeks, all of a sudden it's like, congratulations, I have money for you. You were the runner up. So that does happen. So people should always apply. And then I wanted to just touch on one final thing. Some of you guys may have already heard about this. We do have some, we actually, the foundation has done some extensive fundraising around emergency funds. Um, we were a little bit ahead of our time. We had a donor in 2018 who donated $10,000 to us with the caveat that we use it for a student who needed to remove a barrier in their education. Now, what's a barrier of education? That's a fancy way of saying, my car is in the shop. It's gonna cost me $400 to get out. It's between me dropping out of school, working more hours and paying for that bill. Um, going to school is not an option. Uh, this is where we can come in. You work with Roadrunner Resources, which can be reached at resources at lynnbenton.edu. Carlina Weeks is our excellent coordinator. She will work with you. If a community service uh, or a community entity cannot help you with an expense, for example, you need those new shoes for culinary or you need the welding um, textbook and it's $200 and you it's between that and food, we're going to cover that textbook. And we have the ability to do that thanks to some donations. A lot of staff have participated in this in this uh, experience as well. And we are actually now we have faculty association gives money to help students. So if there is an expense that you are that you're struggling with an internet bill, if you don't have your internet, you can't take your class. Those are things we can cover. We will not cover credit cards. We will not cover car payments. We will not cover storage facilities, but we really will try to cover that expense that is stressing you out if we can. Um, I also replace a lot of um, glasses. If you don't have your glasses, you can't see. You can't see, you can't do your studying. So that's something we would cover. So just know that there really is, LB really does care. It's, it's more than just a slogan. Um, we do have um, expenses that for some people uh, may be very small. If you ask somebody in the community for 200, they think, oh, that's easy peasy. For a student, this is a huge expense. 
So just want to make sure that we want to keep you in school. Um, we want to help support you in any which way. Uh, student leadership does a great job at supporting this as well. They have come in and created a textbook fund that is just to be used to help students with textbooks. That was something that Rob Camp created just last year. They also have spent a large sum of money on um, Safeway gift cards that can be used both for food and for gas. So if you are experiencing a food uh, scarcity issue or if you're having difficulty affording gas, please reach out. Uh, we don't want to hear after the fact that you did, didn't, couldn't make it. We want to help you. So there's some limits to this. We do try to do um, one time will help you out kind of thing. Uh, but keep in mind, there's a lot of other resources that uh, the Road Runner Resources has available. Uh, we work very closely, as in I shouldn't say we, but Carlina works very closely with Community Service Consortium in Corvallis. They have done a tremendous amount of help for our students that are struggling with rent um, uh, deposits, utilities, that sort of thing. We are also have been given additional funding from the state to help with emergency funds. So we have some resources and we really want to give those out. So just want to make sure that while textbooks is something I hope you, uh, or textbooks and all that stuff is something you can already cover. If you can't reach out, um, I hope all of you will consider applying for scholarships after this workshop today. Um, and at least hopefully, when can scholarships sue? Sorry, I'm just looking at the, at the chat here. Miranda, I'll let you kind of read those to me. Um, I'm just about finishing up here, so. Um, so yeah, so anyway, I just, I hope that you walk away from this hoping, feeling that scholarships are for you, scholarships are for everyone, and that you will consider applying. Um, I really want to give a special thank out to Miranda, who is probably going to read a question to me right now, and to Rob for making this happen. So um, go ahead, Miranda. Um, Robin said she accidentally purchased two of the Math 95 Alex access course codes. Would there be a way to donate that code to give to somebody in need? Yes, I think so. I think so, Robin. That's very sweet of you. Let me, I don't know enough about that to understand the process, but um, yeah, definitely. Let's see what we can do with that. If you want to just contact me, that'd be great. So the best way to contact me is email. Um, I do have my cell phone number out there as well. Um, I, um, but I'll just, you know, you can email me. I'm very good. Even if I am not working, check an email. I'm working from home today. And that's, that's what I've got everyone. So if anybody, I just open it now for questions or. There was another question that came out a little bit earlier is when can students expect to see scholarship funds? So the scholarship funds are placed on the student accounts the second week of the term at the same time as financial aid and other aid. So I believe disbursement took place in a magical time between Monday and Tuesday this week. So what that means is the funds should be on your account at this point. Um, and if there are funds that are in excess, once you've paid, once you've covered your balance, if there's additional funds available, again, those will be refunded to you. If you do not have direct deposits set up, that will go out by mail five to seven business days after uh, this week. Uh, but if you have direct deposit, you may see the scholarship or any refunds coming as soon as this week. It really depends on your on your bank. Um, if you haven't already, I do highly recommend you diving into the back end of WebRunner and setting up direct deposits. If you ever need to get reimbursed by the college, it's the quickest way. So that's just a little inside tip right there. Any other questions? I've got a quick question. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so for me, I've already started writing the, the essays for the, the questions. And I mm -hmm. think the hardest part for me is anticipating like what the people that are reading the scholarship want. Like some scholarships, I've, I've won a couple. Um, some scholarships may give you like 500 words, but they really want like 125. They want simple and concise. Um, others want like a more eloquent speech type. So I think that's the hardest part is like determining what you guys are looking for. Well, um, no, that's, I, I really appreciate you saying that. I think that, you know, we really, I have, I have no issue. There's no, there's no magical formula. We have students, as long as you express yourself, I, I, I think the, the biggest 
thing that I see as a reviewer, and I actually try to review every single scholarship application, not only because I'm crazy, but I, I really do want to hear uh, and know what you guys are going through as students. It really benefits me both as a, as a human, but also as a fundraiser to be able to share that. Um, so I would say to that, that the biggest, the biggest mistake I see is students that say, I am at LBCC, I hope to have a 4.0 and transfer to Oregon State. Uh, getting good grades is, is my goal. Um, bye. I mean, that's, uh, that's a common thing. We don't really care. Again, if anything, we don't care about grades. We want to hear about you. Like, for example, just share what has inspired you to come to school here. So there really isn't like you can take it in different ways. Some people can express themselves very clearly with fewer words. Other people need more, more words. So just take a best shot at it. Share that, share that, um, that write up maybe with somebody you feel comfortable sharing that with like a friend and say, Hey, does this, does this give a good picture of like who I am and what I'm looking to do at LB? And they might actually point out something and say, Hey, you really should add, you know, something about that you worked at a camp last summer with kids. And maybe that's what inspired you. That's just an idea. So I, I think it's like, take, take it. There's really, you're not going to get penalized. The only thing you will get penalized. I think at LB is writing too little in terms of just, you know, share, share about you, not so much your grades. Um, another question came in and said, if uh, five credits this term, but will be over six next term, should I apply for scholarships? Yes, you should apply for scholarships. Um, you will, there, we have a few scholarships that will um, still award to somebody who is, uh, we considered six credits to be part-time. Um, I mean, a low part-time, but that is a requirement. You will get eligible, you will be eligible for more scholarships if you have, if you put in that you're going to be in 12 credits next term. If, you know, perhaps you're not in 12 credits next term because you can't afford it, but once you get a scholarship, you may be able to afford it. That's something I also see is that if I'd known that I could have gotten a scholarship, I would have signed up for more credits. So again, we always verify before we disperse scholarships that you are enrolled in the adequate amount of credits. If you are enrolled and I see that you've got a scholarship and I have a question, I will reach out to you to verify. It won't just take that money away from you. All right. Anything else? Any other comments or questions? Mm, yeah. I uh, showed up late and I was wondering if this recording will be somewhere to go back and look at uh, what I missed. <laughs> Sorry for showing up late. So oh, one thing I will say is if you email me, I'll put my I'll put my email in the chat. I'll make sure you get it right away while we're waiting to get it on the website. Um, but I will put it in the chat for you. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. All right, well, I really encourage you um, to reach out to me and ask questions. There is no such thing as a silly question and I always enjoy hearing from you. So do feel free to email me and I will get back to you and help answer any questions you have. Um, just, you know, want you to know, I mean, there are several of you on this call that are scholarship recipients that have gotten scholarships. Um, even Miranda are, are, is, you know, is a scholarship recipient. So, you know, there's, um, it's, it's really worth it. It's, it's um, and it, I think one of the things I hear from recipients of scholarships is, of course, financially it's helping you, but it also gives you that emotional kind of boost that somebody out there is really believes in you and they want to help you be successful. And that's something that uh, one of the requirements I do have is after you do receive a scholarship is that I will ask for you to write a thank you letter. Um, and I even provide instructions how to do that. So uh, because that is uh, that's also a challenge. You know, some 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 of you may never have written a thank you letter before. Um, those thank you letters go back to the donor uh, or the donor's family if the family uh, if the donor is deceased and they really make a big difference. Um, to be honest with you, once people hear from you students, they want to give more. <laughs> so, and uh, once they give us more, we can hand out more money and help more of you. So it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good cycle to be in. But um, again, I really hope that, oh, deadline for sending thank you letters. That's a good question. So I do ask that you try to get me the thank you letter. If you received a scholarship this fall term, that you get it to, get it to me within the third week of the term. So what is that? That's I guess next Friday the 15th. However, I'm not a stickler on that. Um, I really just, I want you to send a, a thank you letter when you can get it to me. So even if you can't get it right away, but as a rule, a lot of, a lot of students actually write the thank you letter right when they get it, uh, the scholarship, just cause it just kind of takes, takes care of it. Um, 
but reach out to me if you have any concerns. I, I can give you some extra time. It just, it really just does uh, really help. It really, the donors really appreciate it. So. All right, anything else before I head out? All right, well, I wanna thank all of you for coming today. And I hope that you will reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns. And I hope to see your application. Look forward to learning more about you. Thank you. Thank you.